So, welcome to the uh, 2020 tank collection video for my channel. And um, as you can see, I'm showing my face. And uh, if you think this is a face reveal, it really isn't. I showed my face multiple times in many videos, such as uh, Hobo Adventures. And I just never showed it in uh, my average um, how-to videos because I had no reason to. Anyways, today, just like the other uh, collection videos, I'll be showing off my cardboard tank collection uh, of the tanks that I made. This collection though, however, I will only be showing my Generation 2 um, tanks and up because if you see my last tank collection video, you know that I split up my tanks into di different generations and uh, since generation 2 and under is hideous so we'll be cutting it to only uh, generation 2 and maybe another generation if you want to see generation 1 or 0 which I I mean you could it's in the tank collection 2019 the main purpose of this collection video is to show growth you can see my first tank that I'll be reviewing and the oldest one in the group compared to the newest tank I'll be reviewing and uh, yeah these collection videos uh, although they're nice to see if you are interested in cardboard tanks they also help me keep track of my um, tank collections and that being said this uh, the tank collection or the tanks we'll be reviewing right now in this beautiful set right here made out of one dollar two poster boards from Dollar Tree uh, we'll be reviewing the tanks in chronological order so that means uh, the oldest ones that I've made and then to the newest I think that helps a lot more than categorizing them by country and also I'll be including these creative shout outs because um, I'm really impressed by some of the things that people have been building and I wanted to share them if you are offended that I didn't uh, add you to this shout out well I don't know what to say so without any further waiting let's get into the collection here is uh, all the tanks that I made since the last tank collection video so basically all the tanks I made in 2020 although that's not actually true since my last coll tank collection video was made in 2019 uh, the summer so it's not made at the end of the year so in that time I made 15 tanks 15 tanks in half one year and a half welcome to the setup and hopefully it is a vast improvement over the last year's setup uh, you can see it right now and I have these uh, army men scenes set up just to provide some atmosphere and some scaling reference because I originally did scale my tanks from army men and I still do and I do understand that um, many of you on the channel aren't interested in army men and haven't come from the army men community but I do make stop motions well it's been quite a while don't at me and we're gonna start off so in this video I'll be showing off about 30 plus tanks so let's try to get through this quick shall we hopefully the video won't be too long as I said it is in chronological order so we'll start off with my first generation uh, two tank the Bob Semple why is the Bob Semple my first generation two tank well I explained this in my uh, last video but basically it's because I categorized my tanks uh, back then by accuracy uh, here for reference this is a generation zero tank and it's supposed to be a t-34 I don't think if you know what the t-34 is you probably don't know uh, what this thing is supposed to be so why is this a generation two because it's quite in my idea accurate because the Bob Semple is a pretty easy tank to replicate since it's a box it's it's like it's it's a box with a circle on top and the tracks everything it's not that hard to replicate you can tell it's a uh, pretty lacking though if you look back in my channel's history you can this is more like a generation one tank details are pretty uh, messed up uh, the tank the Bob Semple is quite battered up you can see the turret is a little bit warped this stuff is falling off and on this side uh, I left it next to a leaking water source so it kinda just wet my tank and then the piece fell off so it's a it's the oldest generation uh, 2 tank out there that I have 
and uh, I made it maybe like more than a year ago. Next is the Girls in Panzer Panzer IV. This is pretty old as well because uh, this was in my Battle of the Bulge video and in the Battle of the Bulge documentary stop motion that I made uh, two years ago I guess. It uh, featured mostly uh, generation 1 tanks. You can see it right now. There's a lot of old ones. But it did have this one in it. I, I didn't make a video on this and I made it at my cousin's house. And for some reason, I guess by sheer luck, it's quite accurate or accurate looking. You can see the details are not accurate to the tank. This vision port looks pretty um, abstract, I guess. The back is very uh, abstract as well. I don't know if abstract is the right word for it, but the tank is, the, the details are really simplified, I guess you could say, abstract simplified. I guess it looks quite accurate because uh, of these sheets covering it. You can't really see the turret details or the side. If you actually look closely at the turret, it um, kind of looks like rubbish. And actually, after the Battle of the Bulge uh, documentary I made, that's when I had the most tank improvement. That's where I started making uh, Generation 2 tanks. So most of the tanks that I make or are shown in this video are uh, after the Battle of the Bulge, but this is an exception as well as the Bob Semple and one other, which is next. Next is the Panzer One. The Panzer One, you can tell, is pretty old as well because of these simplified details. And one thing I didn't mention is that all these old tanks have really simplified wheels. You can see they're just circles that are terribly cut out. These wheels are made out of foam, so most of my early tanks are made out of foam wheels because they are thicker and, uh, uh, yeah, they're thicker, that's why I use them. And that's a big notifier that this is a old uh, tank. But it is quite accurate, or at least it, I think it looks that way. Although it's pretty battered up now because the tank, uh, the structure isn't that good. Um, it still, it still looks quite similar to the Panzer I. I also added a better camouflage onto this tank since the last time you saw it, which uh, you can see it on the thumbnail right now. And that's because I had some leftover uh, gray paint while painting something, uh, another tank, I guess. I think it was a BT, uh, BT-42. And I just decided to add it on to try to like cover up the details and to make it look more interesting. As again, you can see that the details are really um, simplified, but you can start seeing that some of the details are um, being more accurate, such as these, uh, the wheels, they have this uh, like train um, connection on it. The top has the hatch. So uh, in these tanks, the details are starting to become more accurate. All right, here's the big jump. Next up is the Tiger II. This is a big exception um, because you can see the jump in quality, but later on the quality does go back down. And this was made right after the Battle of the Bulge uh, stop motion because of a challenge made by um, someone. But this tank, I'll tell you the story after it. Uh, I made it after the Battle of the Bulge because I had made a Tiger II at the end of the stop motion uh, for the stop motion. And uh, some people said it looked uh, terrible because it did. So at the time I decided, you know what, I'll just remake it again and try to make it as uh, detailed and uh, accurate as possible. So this was my skill set at the time, uh, pushed to the limits. So you can see there's detailed wheels, which is unlike the tanks that I've shown right before. The details are more accurate to the actual tank. You can see these, they have this. It's less simplified. You see um, the wheels are simplified but more uh, inspired, I guess you could say, by the actual tank. The wheels on this were my first time doing detailed wheels. This was a big jump, as I said again, of uh, my learning process. But you can see that the gears are pretty rubbish. The wheels aren't even that circular. The turret, this is the, uh, the, the Tiger II version where it doesn't have the flat one. This is, I think, the Porsche turret version. Uh, it, all I can say, the details are more inspired, all right? But I, st I do really like the Tiger II. Uh, I think I'm, I was really proud of it at the time. Uh, now, to this day, I'm really glad that I made this because it really pushed me forward to make more detailed tanks. Next up is the Type 64. And you can see there's a drop in quality. There's not detailed wheels, uh, but the details on the top of the tank are getting more accurate as I said again. The reason there's a drop in quality was because as I said the Tiger II was a challenge so I thought it was a one-time thing 
that I didn't have to do it, just uh, uh, the details, uh, I didn't have to do it all the time. But you can still see that I did adapt the adding the gear right here. It's really hard to see because it's a really terrible gear. I started using uh, highlights for the tank. You can see uh, there's um, me metallic paint. At first I used a really light gray at the start because I didn't think that I would use metallic but then I uh, redid it with metallic. And this is the M18 Hellcats turret on top of a, another tank. This is a Kitbash uh, Chinese tank. And by Kitbash, uh, I mean it's real. They just like put some two tanks together. And also I made this for Chinese New Year's if you didn't know, because I am Chinese and I wanted to make a Chinese tank for once. Next up, the BT-7. And first off, you can tell just by looking at the army men in the back that this thing has been scaled terribly. It's super, super small, but it is quite, uh, I really like the accuracy I guess I put into this thing. The back, you can see that has this detail that is on the actual tank. I tried making the hatches on the turret, the gun as well as more detailed. I do have to say one characteristic of old tanks is the circles that are very terribly cut out. The Stug 3. The Stug is also not that detailed. The wheels are not that detailed. And the back, you can see that these are just pretty simplified details, but the cupola is still there. The mantlet, uh, I think the main uh, improvement on my tank making skills is the mantlet, which I tried molding out of hot glue. This is the main characteristic of this tank. Overall, it's pretty uh, simple, pretty average. I think it looks quite accurate. One thing though is that uh, you can see that there's unpainted marks on the tank. Uh, it's really messy, okay? These early tanks are really messy and also they're kind of dusty. You can, say, you can see this is actually not the weathering of the tank. So these tanks have been sitting on a shelf for quite a while and I can just like wipe off some dust right here. Next up, the BT-42. And you can tell that this was made because of the show Girls and Panzer if you've seen it. You'll know about this and I think the show popularized this tank quite a lot. This is an improvement over my last BT-7. Yeah, since these tanks are just basically the same tank but with a different turret. Uh, it's a lot bigger and uh, the details on the front are more, more accurate. The back though, of course, is still just simplified. And also the turret, I think this is one of the first tanks that I've made a open turret besides the Tiger II. What I like about this tank and the main improvement is this curve. I tried doing a curve for the turret, molding it with hot glue. At this time I was doing curves with just hot glue. And you can see that the curve is very messy. And that is the main drawback with hot glue because it's very hard to fill in the gaps and the holes because the hot glue is clear and it's just really hard to work with. This is also part of the winter set. Uh, for some reason th that year I made four tanks and photographed them in the winter at one trip when we went to play the snow. Okay, next up the T-55 or T-54 I think. I don't know uh, the differences. I'm not into modern tanks that much. Right now though, you can see uh, something about the wheels. They are more clean because I stopped using foam for this one and uh, I started just using regular cardboard that was cut out and you can see they're just glued onto cylinders. The big thing about the T-55 though is the turret. You can see that it's pretty curved and it's different from the BT-42 because it's not molded out of hot glue. If you're curious about how I made the curved turret, you can watch my video on it. And I think this is my first tank doing a gun depression mechanism. Right now it's broken though because it didn't hold the test of time. But that's also another improvement. This tank had a lot of improvements and also the details are getting more accurate. They have these track thingies, some of these uh, stuff on the, I, I don't know what these are actually. The light, the cupolas, and the light, again, some wire. I think I started using wire more in these things, but the back, you can still see that it's not that detailed because I don't pay much attention to the back. And actually for beginners, I recommend you don't pay much attention to the back because no one cares about the back. Like, you're not gonna look at it that much. So if you are a beginner and you don't wanna uh, work too hard or you're not sure about your uh, skills yet, you can just leave the back for dead. But it does have these fuel canisters. The SU-85. This, it has some slow improvement. The back is a little bit more detailed, slightly more detailed. The top, not so much. 
The gun I'm quite proud of because of the weird shape of it. I tried making it out of uh, rolling paper into shapes and with hot glue. You can see it right now. Nothing too complicated. Tracks on the front, I actually added teeth to the tracks on this one um, to give it uh, more detail. Actually on many of my tanks, when there's tracks on the top of the tank, you, you know, put on as extra armor, I do detail the track a little bit more. You can see this on the Tiger 2 as well. And this is because the tracks that are used on the actual tank, which is just corrugated cardboard, does not have, well, most of the details on the track. If I glued just this to the, tra uh, to the tank, it would look pretty bland. I didn't start adding teeth to my actual tank tracks until much later. Now the IS-3. The IS-3, uh, the main improvement is the turret. The turret has a much uh, smoother shape than the T-55. You can see right here the T-55, although made by the same technique, has some imperfections right here. And there's a lot of bumps on the side. Uh, using the same technique though, on the IS-3 I did manage to make it smoother, but it does have a texture. And right now, the turret is kind of locked into place because uh, Maybe the, the material that I use kind of just hardens or something. It's kind of odd. You can see this texture. This is from a paper towel because I use them to wrap the tank. And I also fixed this in my later tanks. Gun depression. I actually didn't show this tank on my channel even though I made a video on it. I might post the video on it if I don't have anything to post. So overall, I really like the tank because of the turret. I actually worked really hard on the turret and I actually made two turrets. Right here, you can see the first turret. And the main reason I made a new turret was because the shape looked a little off. This one has a more pointed nose and this one is just more circular. So this turret is kind of hard. These tanks are really kind of durable really if you think about it. This thing is like a rock. Overall the scaling is kind of bad but I just really like the turret honestly. Here is the first British tank I've ever made, I think, and it is the Churchill. The Churchill right here, uh, it's not that accurate, I think it's a little bit kind of oddly scaled, I remember. The Churchill though has a lot of improvements due to the detailing. You can see right here I tried to replicate the weird uh, texture or look on the track coverings. And also the track coverings itself was really hard to make due to the shape of it and the amount of wheels, oh my goodness. But uh, again, you can see the wheels are more clean on this model. Uh, the gun looks just kind of too big. This machine gun looks also kind of weird. I don't know why I use a stick. Overall, I'm not that proud of this tank. The Churchill was a hard tank to tackle. Looking back at it, it has way too many details and me making it, well, it, it's just not up to par with my um, expectation. Now, this is another milestone, just like the Tiger II, and this is the Panzer IV. You can see it's way much more detailed compared to the old Panzer IV, although it looks kind of messy, and the turret is kind of broken. The reason it's so detailed is because this again was a challenge. I don't remember why, but it was a challenge. So uh, this is the first tank that I did weathering on, actually. You can see I'm starting to add some nice tools, some other details, the wheels. The wheels on this one are very detailed. Again, this is the uh, going back to the Tiger II. The wheels are really detailed. This was a, a push, I guess you could say, to making more detailed wheels. So I think now looking at a pattern now, you can tell that challenges are what drive me to uh, improve. And I think you should try doing challenges as well, although you might butcher them. As you can see, this tank, uh, even though I tried my hardest on it at the time, the there's a lot of problems. It looks really messy for one. You can see that the tracks, like the tracks usually supposed to go up like this. The details are getting more accurate to the tank, although the back is getting left out once again. Since I said the Panzer IV was the bridge to more accurate tanks, this was the tank after it, the M3 Lee. Now looking at this, it has a lot more details, and one thing, look at the back. It has accurate details. What a, an amazing feat. The wheels are much, much more detailed, and it even has these rivets that I started uh, doing. The tracks, the first detailed tracks, you can see that I glued a uh, plate onto the back of uh, the corrugated cardboard for the American tanks. I'll be doing the same for all the American tanks. Some weathering, you can see it's kind of dusty, but I think most of the dust is because it's been outside. Uh, I have been doing things with these tanks. 
The gun can move, although it's a little bit broken. This turret can move. The top turret can't move though because I just got way too lazy. Overall, I'm pretty proud of this tank. This is why I use it to scale all my other tanks. And from now on, you'll see many of the tanks that I make I don't have videos on them because I was experimenting and uh, working on a lot of new things. But you can see my tanks on Instagram. So you can see them through Lee on my Instagram as well as a lot of other tanks. If you want to see things that aren't shared onto YouTube, like other tanks or things that I'm making, you can follow my Instagram. But I do understand not everyone has Instagram. So I try to post some in the community tab. But if you do have Instagram, try to follow me. Next up is the Chiha, and this is the first uh, Japanese uh, and only Japanese generation 2 tank that I've ever made. And uh, it's just pretty average. I was actually quite disappointed in this because um, I think I didn't get the shape right or uh, the front is a little bit too long. And at the time I just was quite dis disappointed. It also didn't hold up. There used to be um, uh, the antenna, the, the wiring around here, but it broke off. The gun also broke a little bit, that's why it's pointed down. Um, there's also a wheel missing right here. The only interesting things about it and the improvements that I've made was these tracks. And these tracks you can see on the inside, they have teeth by just cutting out a corrugated strip and gluing it inside to give the tracks a little bit more detail. It's a pretty cheap way of making the teeth, but if you want to add more detail to the tracks without working too hard, this is a way. I, I've been starting to make uh, cupolas, uh, open cupolas, so I can put uh, soldiers inside and sticking out because most tankers are sticking out the cupolas. A lot of the tanks now are going to have these static cupolas. You can't close or open them yet. Here is the Archer. The Archer I am pretty proud of. It is really detailed. It has ventilation, the wheels have some mud on them as weathering, and the wheels are quite detailed as well. The back has some rope, the tracks are pretty nice. It also has that track uh, inside as well. I really like it and um, the main uh, improvement or the main um, uh, characteristic of this tank is the inside. It is completely detailed. In my last collection video, uh, I, I couldn't show the inside because my lighting was terrible. It was just black. But now you can really see inside of it. You see there's ammo racks, there's a chair, a lot of details inside. Even the gun. The gun has the breech and everything and I'm pretty proud of it. And also the antennas, this is another thing you want to take away. These were made out of fishing uh, line and I usually make antennas out of either wire, really thin wire, or fishing lines. They both have uh, different perks. Fishing line is very hard to break. It's more durable because, uh, you know, you just if you like put your hand over it, it's not gonna come off. The only problem is that fishing line is usually wrapped around in a coil, so you'll get this um, curve. And I'll show the wire antennas in the next models. The M3 Stewart I also like as well. It's pretty detailed, just like the M3. Uh, the same type of wheels. I think I got. Uh, I think my American tanks benefit a lot because they are really. Um, unified because they the Americans in World War II had to mass produce tanks and they use the same parts so you'll see the same wheels on uh, different tanks and that helped out when making the tanks because I didn't have to like tackle a new type of uh, wheels or suspension or anything painting symbols are pretty nice as well I put one two three four on here because um why not also adding details onto the uh, wheels even more this as well I really like it because it's scaled nicely. It just looks pretty nice even though it's kind of outdated. You can see it's a little tilted to the left. Leveling is also a big problem in tanks. You can see, also see the headlights. They're made out of hot glue to give it that glass look, although it doesn't look perfect since it's fogged up. The Martyr 2. Martyr 2 is special because it's the first uh, pretty detailed tank um, video that I made. If you look on my channel, you can just see all these quite um, simplistic old tanks and then it just jumps to this for one video and then it goes back to old. And I don't post my tank videos in order at, at all. Sometimes I post them in different orders because it's more convenient. The back is pretty nice. This is also another open top tank so there's a lot of details inside although it's less detailed than the um, Archer. I think this actually predates the Archer but um, it doesn't really matter that much of the chronological order. I made a lot of tanks at the same period. The gun though is kind of uh, lopsided, tilted. That is a large angle to be um, offset at. The M4 Sherman. Uh, there's a lot to talk about uh, with this one. Uh, the M4, of course, you know, the reputation of the M4 is pretty uh, large. This is the EZ8 variant, although I don't know the specific codes. 
Uh, a lot of features on this tank. Uh, as you can see, there's the wire antenna. This one, the perks of a wire antenna is that you can move it around. Um, it can be straight, although this wire isn't straight. And although it's not as durable as a um, fishing line uh, antenna, you can add some stress onto it and it will bend. So if a rock hits it or you put your hand on it, it won't snap off usually, unless there's a lot of force. Another defining feature, this cupola. This is the first cupola where it can uh, open and close. Right now there's some blue tech on it because um, of reasons, but you can open and close this using a simple hinge mechanism. This is so uh, if I use this in a stop motion, I can uh, animate soldiers going inside and outside the tank. Another thing, the machine gun on the top was pretty good, although the machine gun is very, like, not that detailed. This tank also has a elevation mechanism, but it has broken, but it did work when I first made it. Also the turret, it's round just like uh, the IS and stuff and I'm pretty uh, impressed by it because there's no texture, there's a really little texture though. There's, um, it's really smooth, it looks pretty nice and I really worked hard on this because the, as I said, the M4 has a lot of expectations. Wanted to meet it and didn't want to butcher it again. And with M4 starts the American era. This is where I speedily made a bunch of American tanks uh, for reasons and Here's the next one, the M24 Chaffee. The M24, although I uh, really like the wheels because, um, look at him, although one is missing right now. I also like the shape of it, but I think it's a little inaccurate. The turret is quite small and the turret, the turret just looks off. In my defense though, the M24's turret is really hard to replicate. Overall, not bad, although I would love a better turret. The M24 Pershing. Uh, for me, it's kind of a letdown because there's a lot of uh, shape problems. If you look at the turret right now, it looks kind of odd. Uh, if you uh, watched my channel long enough, the M24 uh, Pershing is actually one of my favorite tanks. When I made this, I actually uh, rushed it and made it really quickly because I needed it for uh, photographing at a vacation. I needed it for various uh, reasons. One big problem is that the tracks, you can see there's no it, it just like kind of but the back is quite detailed although it's not that impressive the turret was really hard to replicate i actually made this in an rv during a camping trip that's probably why it suffers so much and uh, i went to lake tahoe and i wanted to finish the tank to photograph it there because that is kind of a, a goal in my mindset uh, also there was no wi-fi so it was really hard to get reference pictures. I remember uh, trying to get Wi-Fi. I didn't have Wi-Fi for days, so once I did, I had to like download photos of the tank. I didn't have any 3D models or anything. If I made this in my actual house at the time, maybe it would have looked better. The M7 Priest. This is a very odd tank, and I don't have a tutorial for any of these American tanks, actually. I think the only one that has a tutorial is the Sherman, which is, now that I think of it, that's really odd. That's probably because I was really making these tanks really fast and um, I didn't have time to make how-to videos on them. The M7 Priest, uh, the best thing about it is that the interior is super detailed. This this gun, this artillery gun, is really nice. You can uh, move it 360. Well, it has a lot of uh, rotation, not 360. You can move it up and down, although it doesn't hold its spot. It wasn't really intended to do that because I didn't know how to do it. Back is detailed. This is uh, the third time making the Sherman type chassis. And I really like these shells that are like, you can see them hold it onto there. Although this tank is kind of odd just having uh, six shells in there. And with that, I've covered all the tanks in my last tank uh, collection video. All the tanks now are dated after the collection video and are made in 2020 or late 2019. To start off, let's look at the M18 Hellcat. The main thing and the main problem with this tank for me is that it's just not wide enough. And that is a huge scaling error. I'm kind of annoyed by that because of uh, everything else just looks kind of good in my opinion, uh, including the turret. And the only problem is just it's not wide enough. You can see the improvement from the Type 64's turret. They're the same turret. This is the M18, this is the M18 turret. Uh, the turret's more clean. The main characteristics about this tank is the turret mechanism and these wirings. This wire took a lot of work. It's not too impressive in detail, but the shape is pretty okay, although the scaling is terrible. Following the M18, I made the M36 Jackson. This is another open top tank. You can rotate it, you could hear dirt rustling inside of it. And this one was scaled uh, pretty uh, well, I think. It's not the most detailed as well, because 
when you try to make tanks for just speed and trying to like get them done, you're not gonna get much improvement. If you look at the M3 side by side with the M36, you won't see much improvement. One of the characteristics about this tank is the turret mechanism is different from the M18. You can take it off and this uh, gives a lot of um, perks, such as being able to detail the inside better, although I did not in this tank for some reason. And also if you put soldiers in here, you can get them unstuck in case they fall in. This has happened on the M18 actually. I put a soldier in there and it has got caught in there. This is the final of the World War II uh, American tanks that I've made. And uh, I don't know what to say about it. it. Looks pretty average. This is the most recent American tank I've made, the M60. This is one of the rare modern tanks that I've made. And uh, again, with these round turrets, sometimes the turret just gets locked into place. The proportions are pretty okay on the tank, but it's way too big. This thing is as big as, almost as big as my mouse. And I think I made this to compare my cardboard tanks to uh, the plastic M60. And this was because, uh, again, this is, uh, I'm kind of part of the army men community. I just wanted to show that you don't need plastic tanks um, for your stop motions. You could make the same thing out of cardboard and make it even a little bit better. Uh, whether this is better than a plastic uh, M60, it's up to you. The turret on the top moves. You can see the texture on the turret, but it's not as much as the past tanks. The main thing that I'm proud of is this. Uh, modern tanks have the cloth wrapped around the gun mantlet to Actually, I have no idea why. Maybe to stop dust from getting inside. This was actually made with real cloth, but it's been hardened and it looks pretty good. The wiring on the back is also well. The detailing on the back is horrendous though. Actually, the detail on this whole tank is pretty horrendous. Now, this is probably what you've been all waiting for, the Tiger One. Now we're back to improvement on my tank designs. The Tiger One, fan favorite, of course, we all know it. And this doesn't have a video on it, and I explained why in the Porsche Tiger video. But it's because I didn't think that this tank met the expectations of the Tiger one. Although it's really detailed, and I'm actually pretty proud of it. The gun uh, mechanism used to work. The wheels are pretty detailed as well, way more clean. But still, I didn't want to uh, butcher the Tiger and put it online yet. I really like the design. It was posted on Instagram about a year ago. Main problem is the turret mechanism. Tiger's turret mechanism is a really hard one because of just how it is. You see the uh, uh, Russian tanks, it just, it's pretty simple. Um, it has a pretty simple mounting. The Tiger, I don't even know what the Germans were doing. What, what is this, some kind of like triangle? How do you, how do you make it rotate like that? It's pretty, pretty hard, but I think I, perfected it on the Porsche Tiger. Next up is the Hetzer. This is also a fan favorite. The details are pretty nice. The proportions are okay. Uh, the details on the back you can see. The weathering I tried doing on this. Uh, I was improving on weathering right now. Uh, but the main problem is that it's just too small. If you just saw the Tiger, the Tiger you know was shown on screen. This thing is just a little bit too small. I don't know about a little bit though, but I don't think this tank is supposed to be that small. The hatch even, I realized that the hatch could barely fit a perfect person's head. One of these panels are gone because of uh, actual real life weathering. It's not much to say. It looks really nice. It's pretty sleek. I think that's the appeal of the Hetzer design. I want to remake this, but I don't know if I will in the future. One of the improvements is the curved of this mantlet. Now, I'm pretty proud of the T-34. Again, this T-34 has a lot of uh, expectations. It is, you know, the main uh, tank that people remember in World War II uh, from the Russians. It has a pretty good uh, turret mechanism. As you can see, the turret mounting for the turret mechanism is a lot easier than the Tiger, and it holds up. Uh, I think this is the only tank that has the turret mechanism that holds up besides the IS, and the IS and the T-34 have a pretty similar turret mechanism. The scaling is pretty well, although I it might be a little bit too big. The turret is pretty nice shaped, but it's kind of dirty. The Russian I've drawn on there. Cupola, static. Wheels are pretty good using uh, Hocklu dots. The ISU-152 or SU-152, I think it's ISU-152. Can't remember off the top of my head. All I know is that I die a lot from this in World of Tanks. It has a moving turret mechanism. Uh, for some reason, I guess Russian tanks, there's a Russian bias towards uh, depression mechanisms on them still working. Also a missing fuel tank here. I think one just got ripped off right here. The suspension, I think this is the first tank with this suspension right here. You can see it inside. Uh, the tracks are kind of under detailed. One thing that's pretty nice on this tank is the camouflage scheme. I have no idea if this is accurate at all. I just kind of just did it without any reference. One major complaint is the muzzle brake. This thing is just, was really hard to make, but it just doesn't look good. 
The T70. This tank I'm proud of not because of detailing or uh, looks. I just like that I made it in a quick amount of time, maybe like three or two weeks. And it's small, that's why I could make it quickly. It's pretty nice, pretty detailed, pretty good. And usually I do cupolas and other things like that on more popular tanks because that's where it really matters. Now the FT. This is my only Generation 2 World War 1 tank. It has pretty good detailing on the wheels. This thing has the tractor design, of course. The tracks, it has special tracks. This is the one tank that I haven't used the corrugated cardboard tracks. These are custom. I think it looks pretty good, although uh, Mickamations has actually pointed out that the turret placement is horrendous. I do have to agree. This painting, uh, I like how square it is. There's barely any, like, um, problems. That's because I scraped off the paint to make it straight, and the diamond just doesn't match the... Uh, quality of the other parts. The main problem is the tracks. It kind of just angles inward. It just has a tendency to do that. Now this tank, only a few of you know about it. For some reason I didn't show it that much. This is the Ferdinand. I made it on my free time and it is pretty detailed. A lot of weathering. Interesting camouflage. Main features of this tank is of course the engine deck. A lot of detailing. Bolts. The gun actually has a ball uh, socket. You can see you can rotate it everywhere, but although it's a little bit broken. Oh, actually, maybe it's not broken. No, it is. Look, right here, it just falls at a point. But it's not that bad. This was a pretty experimental tank for me. Uh, I think it turned out pretty nicely. There are some scaling errors and the tools kind of look odd. You can see how much weathering is done to the paint job. This is untouched weathering. Now you can see how dirty it is. It's kind of ironic how when people weather tanks to make them look better, you're basically making a tank look better by making it look more like shit. The SDKFZ or something something 251 half track. This is not a tank. Uh, this shouldn't be here. But I'm not going to name this video uh, Tracked uh, Vehicles Collection or something like that. This is Tanks, okay? Tanks is more eye-catching. This has pretty good detailing, uh, although the holes in the wheels, I learned from this uh, mistake how poking them has a little bit of um, the uh, oh, like the residue from like poking into it. The cardboard doesn't like completely come off. This thing does have the wheels. The wheels are under detailed, but you can turn it if you wanted to animate it. Driver's wheel, machine gun, uh, it's pretty nice. It's just a really nice uh, half track. It's actually my only half track that is generation two and I want to make more of them. Here is the 38T and right off the bat comparing it to the Hetzer, the Hetzer is actually supposed to be bigger than the 38T but right here it's about the same size. The gun mechanism is pretty smooth although you can't get some depression, you can't really push down. Machine gun in the front, details in the front. This tank, I use an experimental uh, where you can take off the turret and this is just pretty uh, simple. It's just uh, this thick cardboard. And the thick cardboard because of its shape allows it to like snap and hold on to it. Uh, I don't recommend this because I'm pretty sure it will wear down the cardboard and one day it'll just rip off. I did this because uh, taking off turrets is pretty useful if you're trying to make a tank explode in VFX. So you can like, you know, take off the turret and make it explode without breaking it. The wheels are pretty nice because they're curved. You can see it from this angle. So the next tank, many of you have not seen. I posted it a little bit on uh, Instagram and I made a community post about it, but I didn't post a video on it because uh, I lost the footage. And this is the IS-2 right here in its glory. As I said, I meant to make a how-to video on this, but I lost the footage, but I really did want to make a video on this because this is really detailed compared to the last tanks. And it's probably the most recent milestone uh, in tank making for me. And this again was because of a challenge. The turret, I think this is like really good for rounded turrets. I think I've uh, started to perfect it. It's really smooth. You can barely see the texture and you can see the tank is really low to the ground due to the small wheels and the suspension. Cupola can open and close, although it's a little rubbish. Gun depression mechanism. Russian bias. You can see it really works really well. And this is a big gun. Depression mechanisms don't work well on big guns because, well, the gun usually disrupts uh, the weight balance and then it breaks it. So then the de depression mechanism can't hold the gun in place. Really lovely tank, ventilation, using a lot of detailing techniques, wiring, machine gun. 
This thing even flips up. I think it's just a neat little detail to add. Also, the camouflage scheme. You don't see this camouflage anywhere, mostly, except for this reference picture that I picked. Uh, usually people would paint the IS-2 Berlin camouflage or whatever paint scheme, but I couldn't find any that I liked that weren't white or winter. So I went with this, uh, this uh, kind of bamboo forest design, which is kind of weird because Russian tanks were never in the forest or the jungle. Now the large beauty itself, this thing is really heavy. The mouse, the biggest tank ever made. It doesn't even fit on screen kind of, I have to lower the... There's a lot of things I love about this tank. There's a lot of dust, like holy cow, how much dust accumulates in my room? I think I, I'm gonna have like lung problems. See the turret turns, even though it's probably as big as another tank. Again, like many of my new tanks, the tracks are detailed, although they could have uh, some more paint and uh, weathering on it. Another main characteristic of this tank is the mantlet. You can see it's actually pretty round, and uh, it's really smooth, and it's made by sanding uh, cardboard into shapes. It's a really advanced technique that I might make a tips and tricks video, although I have not lived up to my promise of making tips and tricks videos yet. And and a lot of people like the mouse, so I tried to make up to the expectations, and I think I pretty much succeeded. One problem, I guess you could say, is that uh, I'm disappointing the camouflage scheme because the mouse is supposed to have a feathered camouflage scheme, but I couldn't get that without a airbrush. Next up is the simple cardboard tank design that I made for uh, the Tips and Tricks series. There's not much to say about it, it's for tutorial purposes only. And actually somebody made a uh, tank like this, you can see it on the uh, creator shout out. Uh, I've been getting more interested in trying to teach people about making tanks now that I've been confident in my ability of making them. And I just want to get more people interested in the art of cardboard. So nothing much to say, it's just a simple cardboard tank design. I do have to say though, it is a uh, kind of ugly. I'm pretty sure it's not going to appeal to a lot of people because it just looks so cartoony. The Cromwell. A lot of people have complimented this and it's because it just looks really nice. Gun mechanism goes up and down. It's really smooth. Has a lot of detailing. The the camouflage scheme is probably the most uh, impressive part about this tank. Pretty nice tank. It's pretty recent, so that's why I really like it. Uh, it's probably one of my best tanks right now. Uh, one complaint about this tank though is the wheels. You can really see they're kind of dirty. You can see the cardboard texture. I improved on this on my next tank. I've been making uh, better muzzle brakes using cardboard. You can see there's that nice shape. And finally, my most detailed and best cardboard tank uh, currently, the Porsche Tiger. This is my most recent video. And the main thing about this tank is the amount of detail in the tank. Gun is super duper smooth. You can move this so like, you can move it like super like slightly and it will hold its position. The turret, everything is so smooth, the texture is nice, the weathering is nice, the wheels are extremely detailed. You can see that I improved on it since the um, Cromwell. The Cromwell has a similar kind of wheels but this one is way more cleaner and nicer. Weathering, you can see as well on the ventilation I improved since the IS-2s using the same method. And everything is just uh, a lot nicer, the tools are also improved. There's a lot of improvements on this tank and for once uh, the improvements aren't caused because of a challenge. It's due to my own, my own motivation and that's why it took so long. The cupola as well uh, can open. And this one uses a pretty nice hinge. So this is the uh, best tank I have right now and that also concludes the tank collection video. Oh, and one last thing, the uh, generation placement. At the start of the video, I said that I might uh, add a new generation to the mix. Right now, I said that all the tanks are in generation two. If you don't know what I'm talking about, in my last tank collection video, I, c I categorized my cardboard tanks in different generations. So, I have decided that I would uh, split generation three, which is the next generation. All the tanks before this tank would be generation two. Generation three tank cutoff is with the IS-2. Why this tank? Well, after this tank, I put more of an emphasis on many aspects of the tank making, such as weathering. Although I did weathering on other tanks, this is where I took it more seriously, and I actually did weathering on every tank after this. Gun depression. Every other tank after this has gun depression, except for the simplified uh, tutorial tanks, of course. Openable cupolas, except for the mouse, because um, the mouse is an exception, because I could not find uh, how the cupolas worked on the mouse. I even looked at the uh, Inside the Hatch video from the Chieftain, and he went 
inside the mouse through the engine so better texture after these tanks that you can't really see the cardboard texture the corrugation texture such as this chaffy uh, you can see it when the light bounces off you can see that corrugation and uh, on the newer tanks the detailing the detailing is getting more um, accurate and less simplified one way you can really see the change in detail is um, by looking at similar tank chassis uh, the ice 2 and the ISU 152 have the same similar chassis and you can see that the tracks are less detailed on this one especially on the engine deck you can really see it on the engine deck you can see these similarities between the engine decks but one is more detailed and more accurate and this is what categorizes uh, another category of the generation 3 tanks the generation 3 tanks have a more focus on accurately representing the details this one you can see it's simplified it's just holes cut into here as well as the ventilation here it is simplified on the newer tanks uh, it is not simplified although there is a little bit of simplification but I will try to improve on that one big example of simplification is the tracks of course I don't think as long as uh, making cardboard tanks there will always be uh, simplification because nothing can be 100% accurate. You can also see another big uh, change uh, from generation 2 to generation 3 through this similar chassis. The Porsche, uh, the, Ferd uh, the Ferdinand and they have the same you know chassis. You can see these lights they're not that simplified but on the Ferdinand this light right here is just a circle cut off. You can barely tell it's a light. So those are my reasons for cutting off the generation 3 tanks at where it is. So here is all the tanks in this collection video lined up from chronological order. So to conclude, uh, I'm pretty impressed by the improvement from my tank uh, designing. This was, all this is probably improved and made within the last two years. So two years, I've uh, made it from that Bob Sample to this Porsche Tiger right here. You can see various uh, small uh, improvements in each of the models that I've explained. If you get into cardboard tank making, I'm pretty sure you can improve a lot faster than I have because first of all, you have how-to videos that I make to, um, you know, guide you. Uh, I, I've actually seen people comment, how do you make those cardboard tanks on my how-to videos? And I really uh, question, um, what, what, do you, what, what more do you want? So although this year may have been a pretty trash year, coronavirus, all these uh, disasters, I haven't seen my friends in like a year, all that good stuff, but at least it gives you time to make cardboard tanks. And this year, I'm pretty impressed and satisfied with the results. If you want to check out these tanks in specific, you can check out their videos. Half of these tanks here have videos dedicated to them if you might want to check them out in my channel. And if you're not interested in making cardboard tanks, I guess looking at them is also nice. I also want to uh, thank everyone that's uh, followed the channel since uh, this year because my channel has actually grown quite a bit. 10k. Uh, I didn't make a thank you video because I think those are just uh, kind of bad. But I am really grateful and I hope to uh, make uh, much more videos in the future. So to end it off, here is a nice little animation to show off the uh, improvement of tanks over time. And as always, thank you for watching and Happy New Year's.